Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb for News and Nutrition on what are plasmalogens. You may not have heard about them, but they've been around. We've discovered them back in the 1920s, and actually they've been known. Their importance hasn't been known until recently. A Dr. Diane Goodenow, following a very famous study out of Wake in Presbyterian in Chicago, where 1,200 clergy, retired Catholic clergy, were coming every couple of years to be examined. So over the course of some 10, 15 years, they had multiple examinations and had blood tests done. Dr. Goodenow's invention was a mass spectrometry machine that could measure everything in their blood. Uh, huge, not an SM12, an SM couple thousand. And plasmalogens popped out as being significant, in fact, highly significant, in fact, predictive. So we need to know them. And Dr. Goodenow has gone forward and done a huge amount of research on this. And this is what we're going to follow for the next couple of weeks. But let me explain what plasmalogens are. They are critical phospholipids that are in your membranes. They aren't just any lipids though. Membranes have, lipids have many different qualities based on the fat molecules within them. Plasmalogens contain the fish oil molecule, DHA, at position number two, which helps make them incredibly liquid. So their first property is they're super liquid, which allows proteins embedded in them to move very freely, which allows them to move quickly. That allows your brain to think quickly. Useful feature. Uh, property number two, they can shape shift. They can change their shape. You don't realize how critically important this, this is until you think about having a synapse in your brain which has a vesicle of neurotransmitter and that vesicle has to fuse with the membrane to put its, to put its uh, neurotransmitter out into the cleft. That requires shape shifting. So you can't just have any old molecule that sits there rigid. You have to have something that's willing to change shape. Plasmalogens do that. Okay, this is two good properties, but what's the most important one? The most important one is a precious vinyl ether bond that turns out to be at the end of the plasmalogen on the outside of the membrane, which, and it happens to soak up peroxide. Now peroxide gets made when you've got a damaged cell and your mitochondria are putting out reactive oxygen species. And you've got to soak it up. It's a dangerous compound. The problem is it keeps being passed on from one to the next to the next to the next. You need something to stop it. Plasmalogens stop it. Fantastic. In fact, they represent some 70% of your ability to neutralize reactive oxygen species in your body, which makes them vulnerable. Over time, they get used up. Here's the crux. They get used up because we're living in an oxidizing world and you're getting older. And what we now know is you go through a state of, you go from a state of where you're healthy with normal healthy plasmalogens to a state where you are in a prodrome fashion, where you are no longer as robust in your redundancy and then you get an illness. The problem is, is the illness represents the third state. You can't get, you can't recover from the illness and all we can do is put band-aids on it. We have not been to able to recover that. But the plasmalogens are decreased for 10 to 15 years before the illness happens. So there's a period of time when you're gradually using up your plasmalogens when you can make a intervention and recover them. That's enough heavy-duty geek stuff for the first session. 
but follow this thread. Plasmalogens might be the next massive intervention in healthcare. I'm betting on it. What have I done? I've measured mine, and I'll tell you all about it next time when you, once we get further, further understanding. This is Dr. John Whitcomb, News and Nutrition. What are plasmalogens?